So World Machine is a terrain modeling application. It's purely concerned with creating the form of the terrain, and also optionally making some textures to put onto it. Now terrains are represented by a graph or network-based system in World Machine. So you can see here these boxes, these are called devices. These represent actions that are taken on a terrain. So generators create terrain, filters modify them, and outputs export them for later use. Inside of World Machine, you also have a variety of views, such as the 3D view that gives you a larger look at the terrain that you've currently selected. On the left side here, you have a sidebar that has a small preview that you can change the light angle by dragging within. You have a list of devices here that lets you easily select what you're looking for. And you have a few other options like changing the terrain color to visualize the terrain in different ways. Uh, and you can also turn on or off a water level. Again, World Machine is not a renderer, it's just helping you visualize what you're doing. What you see here though is just a low resolution version. We can choose the final build resolution by going to the World Extents button there. This is our project settings. We can set up the extents of the terrain in kilometers in the virtual world, and we can choose the resolution. So let's go for a thousand by a thousand approximately, and then we choose build. World Machine will do some quick calculations, and then we can go to the 3D view and see what the outcome looks like. And again, you can just pan around and look at the terrain from a lot of different angles here. There's also a 2D view if you prefer just a simple overhead view. Now, there's also some more complicated things that you can do in World Machine. One of the most important concepts to understand is that you can see when we go to the 3D view, you have just a, a small box of terrain, but that's not all there is. The terrain exists mathematically without bound, and we can see what that larger world looks like by going to the layout view here. The layout view shows us a large or small expanse of terrain. Here I've zoomed all the way out as far as I can. And on the other extreme, I can zoom extremely far into the terrain and get down to a precisely detailed level. This white box represents the box that we're exporting. But we can change its location in the world. And you can see the preview now is updating where we're exporting things. I can resize the box so I'm exporting more or less terrain. Now when I go to the 3D view, I'm looking at a different section of the land. You can do a lot more in the layout view here. In particular, you can create what are called layouts, which let you define areas of terrain or where you want to have effects occur. We'll cover that in much more detail in a later episode. For now, the main thing to know is that if you want to actually export your terrain, you have to build it, and then once the build is done, you select your output, choose the file format that you want to export in, give it a file name by clicking Set, and then clicking Write Output to Disk. There, we just created our first file with World Machine. So let's go ahead and experiment with making more interesting terrains in World Machine than the basic default world. So first of all, you can open up any of these devices again simply by double-clicking on them. So if we open up the terrace device, we can change the types of terracing uh, from simple, sharp, or smooth. Each has a different look, so here's a single smooth terrace. You can see it's almost made a path. Let's change that to sharp and see what that looks like. We can now go into our Perlin noise device and change things in here. We have the style of the noise, so it starts out as ridged, but we can turn it into basic noise, or billowy, which gives you kind of a, a puffy look, um, or any number of other variants that are here. We also have uh, presets that have been already created that are interesting looking. So let's take a look at the wrinkled preset and change things around a little bit and see what we've got. So we go to the 3D view, we build the world, now we have more detail to take a look at, 
And this is a pretty interesting looking fractal terrain. It's a little different than what you might see coming out of a typical Perlin noise generator. Okay, well what else can we do? Well, there's any number of ways to combine noises together or modify the result, and we'll explore some of them in more detail in future episodes. I recommend right now that you just experiment to see what you'd like to do. So one of the most important things you can do to a terrain is use natural effects on it, such as the erosion filter here. Erosion is very, very important for giving a natural look to your terrain. So let's go ahead and build and see what we get. Take a look at the outcome. Now I'm not sure if I actually like the effect of the terracing that's been done. So let me go ahead and delete the terrace device, either by right-clicking and choosing Delete, or by simply hitting the Delete key. Now it's removed. Notice that the little box here indicates the readiness of the device. Green means it's fully built and ready to go. Yellow means it has not yet been built at final resolution. Go to the 3D view. I like that much better. That's starting to look like a very interesting natural terrain. Now we can also go into the layout view that we mentioned earlier and adjust the render extents to get more terrain. So let's expand this box to encompass those two peaks that look interesting. And now we'll go back to the 3D view and build that. In a very short time, we now have a quite interesting terrain. Now there are many, many other things you can do. Here we just have one generator, but nothing prevents you from creating more. For example, let's create a radial gradient, which just creates a lump shape in the world. Or we could create a linear gradient. There's also several other types of noise. You can play with these all day. In a future episode, we'll show you how you can combine multiple generators to produce interesting effects. But for now, you probably have enough to go ahead and get yourself into some trouble with World Machine. Have fun, and I'll see you next time.